Okay, so in the last class, uh, we have seen how to work with the uh, different type of uh, operators in Java. Now, today let's continue with the uh, some more important topics, uh, some basics, uh, control statements. So the next topic, control statements. So normally uh, when you write your Java program and when you're executing it, so the statements will be executed top to bottom. Let's say if you have written 10 statements or 100 statements, so the execution will always happen top to bottom. So each and every statement will be executed in sequential manner. Let's say these are the different statements and execution will happen like this. So each and every statement will be executed, right? But sometimes uh, if you, uh, we want to execute a specific statements based upon certain condition, let's say, now I want to execute only these particular statements based upon certain condition. And I want to execute another set of statements based on another condition. That means every time you no need to execute the same set of statements. So based upon the condition, we can also choose the statements which we want to execute. Okay, this is basically called uh, controlling uh, your statements. Means instead of executing each and every statement in your program, we can select set of statements or group of statements and we can execute only those group of statements based on a certain condition. Okay, this is one scenario. Another scenario is, suppose I have a set of number of statements and I want to repeat the same statements multiple times, again and again, based upon certain condition. I want to repeat the same steps, same statements again and again, multiple times. This is basically called as a loop. And we can execute the same set of statements multiple times repetitively. We call it as a loop. And we can execute set of statements based upon certain condition. This we can achieve by using conditional statements. So basically we can control the execution of your program or execution of your code by using control statements. And there are three kinds of control statements. And by using those control statements, we can control the execution of your program or execution of your code. So mainly there are three kinds of uh, control statements are there in Java. So the first type is conditional statements. Conditional statements. Conditional statements. And the second is looping or iterative statements and the third is jumping statements so these are the three kinds of control statements which we have so what is the use of these control statements we can control the execution of your program or you can control the execution order of your program that we can achieve by using conditional statements or looping statements or jumping statements so we will discuss today conditional statements, mainly conditional statements and rest of them we'll discuss in the next sessions. So what are the conditional statements are uh, available in Java? So there are four types of conditional statements. Conditional statements. There are four types of conditional statements. One is uh, only if condition, if condition. Second is if else condition. Third is nested if else and fourth is switch case so these are the four different conditional statements supported in java so the purpose of using the conditional statements is same but we will use these statements in the different scenarios if if else nested if else and then we have a switch case statement so these are the four different type of conditional statements supported in java so now we'll see practically how can we use these conditional statements and where we can use these conditional statements with the different type of examples. So the first condition statement is if. So how to use this if condition? The syntax of if condition is like this. If, and uh, here we put some condition. And if this condition is true, then whatever steps we want to execute or whatever statements we want to execute, we can keep those statements inside this block. So this is called syntax, how to use if condition. So if this condition is true, then only these statements will be executed. 
if this condition is false, these statements will be ignored. These statements will not be executed. So this is only if a condition. Let me show you how to use this. And there is no semicolon for if condition. Okay, if uh, you need to put some condition, open bracket, closing bracket, and what are all statements you want to execute based on the condition, we can specify them inside this block. Now, let me show you some examples. Go to Eclipse. And uh, this is our project which we already created. Now, today is day four. Let's create a new package. Day four. And click on finish. So, how to use if condition? Only if condition. So, let's create a new class. And I'll name it as if condition demo. Take this main method also and then say finish. Okay, so now my requirement is uh, my problem statement is for example, uh, I will take a person age as a variable. Let's say int person underscore age equal to let's say 25. This is a variable I have created. Now my requirement is I want to check this person is eligible for vote or not. So according to my condition, if the person age is greater than or equal to 18, he is eligible for vote. That I want to verify. Okay, so I have simple variable created, person age equal to 25. Now I want to check this person is eligible for vote or not. So if you want to check this person is eligible for vote, simply we can check the condition. If the person age is greater than or equal to 18, we can simply say he is eligible for vote. But how can we verify that condition? How we can check this person age is greater than or equal to 18 or not? So now we can write one conditional statements. So if condition can use if in the bracket, we can specify the condition. What is our condition? The person age should be greater than or equal to 18. Then only he is eligible for order. So here I'm taking that variable, whatever a variable I define, that is person underscore age, that should be greater than or equal to 18. So will it return true or false? This, what is that operator we have used here? Greater than or equal to, which is a relational operator, right? So what is relational operator will do here? It will compare the percentage is greater than or equal to 18 or not. And if it is greater than or equal to 18, it will return true. If it is not, return false. That means here we have to always specify a Boolean expression. Here we have to always write a Boolean expression which will return true or false. So if the condition is true, if the expression is returns true, then we can specify the statements which we want to execute based on the condition here. Inside this bracket, I can say system.out.println eligible, eligible for port like this you can specify. Now, this particular statement will execute only if this condition is returns true. Only if this expression is returns true, then only the statement will be executed. And if this statement is written false, or if the expression is written false, this statement will not be executed. That means based on the condition, we are executing this statement. If the condition is true, execute this statement. If the condition is false, then don't execute this statement. Okay. For example, let's say I'm taking 25. 25 is greater than or equal to 18 or not? Yes, the condition is true. So if the condition is true, then obviously the statement will be executed. So when I execute run as a Java application, so now you can see the output here. So statement is got successfully executed because the expression is returns true. Now I'll just make this as a 15. Now the person age is 15. 15 is greater than or equal to 18. Expression return false. So if it is a false, the statement should not be executed. Now when I run this code, you will not get any output in the console window. So no output because we are not specify anything else other than the statement. So only one statement we specified and this will be executed only if this expression is returns true. Right. So this is how we can simply use if condition. If the expression returns true, statement will be executed. If the expression return false, statement will not be executed. So this is how we can simply use 
if condition only if condition but if it is not true then what should happen we haven't specified that we haven't specified that suppose if the condition is false what should happen if the condition is true this statement will execute if the condition is false what should happen that we haven't specified here so this is only if a statement we haven't specified any else this is only if a statement if the condition is true statement will execute if the condition is false statement will not be executed that's it only if condition the first one okay but sometimes we should also specify else part that means if the condition is not true then what should happen that also we have to include right so for that we use another statement if along with else if a block along with else this is called a block we can put one single statement here or you can put multiple statements also allowed in if condition you can keep single statement or multiple statements okay sometimes if the condition is false then what should happen that also we can specify in the else block so this is only if a condition okay now how can we use if and else block combinations so the syntax will be like this if we put one condition if the condition is true then the group of statements will be executed and uh, if this condition is false for example if this condition is false then we write another block called else block like this so if the condition is true then these set of statements will execute if the condition is false then the else block will execute inside the else block also we can write the statements okay now if the condition is true, if a block will execute. If the condition is false, then else block will automatically execute. This is the alternate. Okay, now this is called if else condition. If else condition. Okay, so how to use this if else condition? So let's say, uh, save this. Let me create another class. Suppose if condition is uh, if condition return false, so then what we should happen? Let me just rename it. This is if else condition. Okay. So this is a if else condition. Same program. I'm taking the person age. If person is greater than or equal to 18, he is eligible for vote. And if this condition is false, then what we should do else? We have to write else block. In else block, we can specify. And what we can specify? Not eligible. Not eligible for what? Like this. So, based on the condition, we are choosing the statements. Right? If the condition is true, if block will execute. If the condition is false, else block will execute. At a time, only one block will be executed. Both will not be executed because the condition uh, will return true or false. Right? If it returns true, if a block will execute. If it returns false, else block will execute. Now, when I say 15, the condition is false. The expression will return false. So, obviously, else block will execute. Okay? So, not eligible for it. either this one or this one. Only one block will be executed always. Okay, so this is how uh, we can use else. Okay, so if condition and then else along with the else. And uh, you should not put semicolon for if condition like this. Okay, for else also you should not put semicolon. Only the statements which we have included inside this block, we have to specify the statements. Okay, so if and else block like this. Fine. So sometimes you may have multiple statements inside this. Okay. So here, if you have a single statement, you can put multiple statements or single statements. Suppose if you have a single statement here, the brackets are optional. Okay. The curly braces are optional. You can directly keep the statement inside the if condition. And here also, if you have a one single statement in the else block, these brackets are optional. Okay, so let me show you. So currently, I have single statement in every block, right? So what I will do is I'll try to remove the, I will try to remove the curly braces. 
just observe this. Okay, now just observe here. I just try to remove the curly brace. I mean, here also I'll remove it. Okay, so now just observe when I'm running this. So you will get a not eligible for order. Now I'll take another number 25 and you will get an eligible for order. So how come it is executing? So that means if you have a single statement under the condition, you no need to specify the curly braces. You can directly write under this. So if the condition is true, the statement will execute. And if the condition is false, else the statement will execute. So if you have a single statement, you no need to put in the curly brace. But if you have a multiple statements, you have to include them in the curly braces. Okay. So what I will recommend is even though if you have a single statement, better to keep inside the curly brace. Why? Because you clearly know whether the statement is belongs to this condition or not. So by seeing the code, you will understand this particular block will be executed based upon this condition. Okay. So if you have a single statement, curly braces are optional. And if you have a multiple statements, you should keep inside the curly braces. Okay. That is another one. You can just remember this. So this is called if else condition. So if condition is true, if a block will execute, if the condition is false, else a block will execute. At a time, only one block of statements will be executed. Okay. Now let me show you one more example for if else condition. So the first example, we have already seen eligible for vote or not. Now the example two. So suppose we define one number and we need to find out that number is even or odd number. So we provide one number and that number we have to find even number or odd number through our program. Okay. So how to find out? So normally if I ask you, if I give some number like this, let's say I have given 10. So if I ask you whether it is even number or odd number, how we will tell? How we will know whether it is even number or odd number? We will simply say it is an even number. When you say 5, you can simply say which is an odd number. But how we will know whether this is even number or not? This is even number. And this is odd number. So how we will know whether it is even number or odd number? So we have some mathematical calculation behind that, right? So if any number divided by 2 returns 0 as a reminder, that is an even number. Okay, for example, let's say if we take any number, let's say 10. 10 divided by 2 returns 0 as a reminder. That is an even number. Right? And 10 divided by 2, suppose 5 divided by 2, which is written 1 as a reminder. So other than 0, whatever reminder you will get other than 0, they are all comes under odd numbers. It can be 1 or it can be anything else. Right? This is a mathematical calculation. Simply we can say. So if you want to say a number is an even number, that number divided by 2 should return 0 as a reminder. And if you want to say a number is an odd number, when you divide it by number by 2, that should return non-zero. Other than 0, you will get any number as a reminder. That is an odd number. That is a logic. So now programmatically, we have to find a number is even number or odd number okay and how can we find out so again based on the condition if a number divided by 2 equal to 0 if condition is true then we can say even number and if not we can simply say odd number so based on the condition we can check so how can we use if else condition here let me create a new class even or odd number so how to check a number is even number or odd number. So what we can simply say, first we'll take one number, int number equal to 10. So I have taken, I uh, have defined one a variable, right? So now we need to find this number is even number or odd number. So how can we check if this number divided by 
2 divided by 2, which is returning 0. And uh, which operator we have to use here? Double equal to or equal to? Double equal to or equal to? Which one we have to use? Condition. If number percentage 2 returns 0 as a reminder, we, are, we have to compare this. The reminder, whatever is written by this expression, should equal to zero or not. We want to compare. So we have to use comparison operator. That is double equal to, right? So if number percentile two, why we are using percentile instead of slash? Because percentile operator will return reminder, right? It is also division operator, but it will return the reminder. That we want to check. So number percentile two equal to zero, that means if this is true, when it, this expression true, if number percentile to returns zero, then this expression will uh, returns true, overall expression, right? Boolean value will be returned. So if this condition is true, then what we can simply say that number is even number. Okay, that number is even number. And other than zero, okay, you suppose this condition falls whenever the remainder is non-zero. That means other than zero, if it is written any other value, this condition becomes false. So in that case, what we can simply say, it is an odd number. That you can specify in else block. In else block, we can say system.odd.println odd number like this. So at a time, only one statement will be executed based on the condition. So if the condition is true, if block will execute, if the condition is false, else block will execute. So when I execute this, it will say Java application, even number. So we can say 10, right? So 10 is an even number. Let's say 15, 15. Now condition is false. So obviously else block will execute, which is odd number. Okay, so this is how we can simply use if else condition. Okay, if else condition we can use. Now let me show you some more examples. Example three. We can practice so many examples like this case and number of examples you can find. So now I want to check a number is positive, negative, or zero. Check a number is positive or negative or zero. So if I provide a number as an input and the program should display whether that number is positive number or negative number or zero. So normally how can we check a number is positive, negative, or zero as per mathematical calculation? How can we verify a number is positive, negative, or zero? How can we say? On what basis we can say a number is positive, negative, or zero? Positive, negative, or zero. How can we find? Yes. Simple calculation, right? If any number which is greater than zero, that is positive number, right? If any number, if I take any number as a variable, if that is greater than zero, obviously that is a positive number, right? And if the number is less than zero, that is a negative number. That is a negative number. And uh, if the number is equal to zero, obviously that is a zero only, right? So we have a multiple conditions here. So far we have seen only one condition one if condition. So sometimes we have to write multiple if conditions. Multiple conditions we have to verify. If the number greater than zero, say positive. If the number less than zero, say negative. If the number equal to zero, then say zero. So the, here we have to check multiple conditions. If you have a only one condition, then we can use only one if condition, one statement, one if statement here, just like this. If condition is true, block will execute. If the condition is false, another block will execute. Only one single condition which we have here. But if I have a multiple conditions, in case if I have a multiple conditions, then how we can specify that? So let me show you one more example. 
take another class. Positive or negative number. Okay, so how can we specify the multiple conditions? Okay, first of all, let us take a number. Int number equal to, let's take a zero first. The number value is zero. Now we want to check which is zero or positive or negative. Okay, so the what is the first condition? If this number greater than zero, if this number greater than zero, then what we can say here? It is positive number, which is positive number. Fine. Suppose if this number is not greater than zero, so condition is false. Then we have to verify another condition, right? How to verify another condition? We can write like this, else if, else if, again one more condition, number less than zero, then what we can say here, system dot 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 print is a negative number, it's a negative number. Even this condition is also false. For example, number is not negative, less than zero. Then what we can specify? The last option which we have, that is zero only, right? So else, here you can say system dot out dot print then zero, like this. So multiple conditions, we can also verify by writing multiple if conditions. So if number greater than zero, execute this statement. If this condition is false, else, one more if condition, else number less than zero, execute this statement. Even this condition is also false, then else last statement will be executed. So else block, uh, else block will always execute if none of the conditions are true. Okay, if all of the if conditions are false, finally else block will execute. So here we no need to put another condition. Again, you no need to write else if number equal to zero, not needed because obviously else block will execute after execution of these two statements, after execution of these two conditions. If both the conditions are written false, then finally else block will automatically execute. So if you have a multiple conditions, you can also write like this else, give one space and then if. So the structure will follow like this. This is called uh, if else later. We can call it as a if else later. So the syntax will be like this. If condition one, first condition, okay? Else, if they're not satisfied, else one more condition. If condition two and the statements, and even second condition is not possible, not uh, returns true, then again one more condition. Else, if condition three, you can put any number of condition like this. Even this is also not satisfied, then else one more condition. Else, if condition four like this and if all conditions are done so finally if none of the conditions are becomes true finally you can write only one else block like this this is called if else later if else later so this is the syntax which you have to use you can put n number of conditions if condition one is true statements will execute in this block else another condition is true then execute this statement even this condition is also false then third condition it will verify. Even third condition is false, then fourth condition will verify. Even this is also false, finally else block will execute. So like this, you can put n number of levels, different levels and different conditions you can specify. Okay, now let us test this code. At a time, only one block of statement will be executed. So initial I say number equal to zero. So when I say number value zero, obviously it will return zero as an output. Now, when I say 10, 10 is a positive number, which is greater than zero. So when I execute, it is written positive number. So when I say minus 10, minus, minus 10 is a negative number. So when I execute, it is written negative number. The second block is got executed. Okay. So at a time, only one block of statements will be executed based on the condition we can control it. Okay, now let me show you one more example. 
So we can also use sometimes the logical operators in the conditions. Okay. So let me show you one more example. Example four. So in example four uh, is we want to find largest of three numbers. Largest of three numbers or you can call it anything. Okay, largest of three numbers. I want. I will provide three numbers. The program should find out which one is the largest number. Okay. For example, uh, let's take three variables. Let's say a equal to ten, b equal to twenty, c equal to thirty, like this. Now, program should say c is the largest number. Or if b is the larger, then program should find out and say b is the largest number or a is the largest number. Okay, so before writing the program, so normally let us think about the logic. How can we find a largest number? If I give these three numbers, immediately we'll say C is the largest number. But how come you say C is the largest number? On what basis you are saying C is the largest number? Do we have any uh, mathematical thing here, calculation, to say which one is the largest number? How you are saying actually? We are comparing each number with other numbers. Right. So, for example, if uh, A greater than B, okay, A greater than B and also A greater than C, then we are saying A is the largest number. Right. This is a condition or not. First, we are taking one number. We are comparing with the rest of the two numbers. If this number is greater than rest of two numbers, obviously, that is the largest number. Same thing we are repeating for other numbers also. For example, if I take B, B is greater than A and also B greater than C, then we are saying what? B is the largest number. B is the largest number. Same thing we are repeating for C also. If C greater than A and uh, C greater than B also, then obviously C is the largest number. So based upon certain condition, we are saying after comparison, we are saying each number we are comparing with other numbers. So if that number is, if the particular number is greater than other two numbers, we are saying that is a largest number or which is a greater number. So these are the actual conditions. Now, the same conditions we have to apply in your programming also. So if you want to say which one is the largest number, we have to use multiple conditional statements. Okay, and one if condition, we can put multiple also. Right, so this we can achieve uh, by writing multiple if else conditions. So let's see how can we implement this practically. So let's create a new class, and here I'll say uh, largest of three numbers. Take this main method and say finish. Okay, same logic. We will try to apply here. I'll keep this so that we can understand the conditions. Okay, these are the three conditions. To say largest of three numbers, we have to verify these three conditions. Okay, I put this in the comments so that you can understand the logic. Now, let us try to implement this. First of all, we need three numbers. Let's create a three different variables int a equal to 10, comma b equal to 20, comma c equal to 30. Now I have taken three numbers, three variables. Now I want to find out which one is the largest number. So first let us compare a with b and c. Okay, the what is the first condition? We have to check a greater than b and a greater than c. Then we will say a is the largest number, right? So what we can do it here is first condition, if A greater than B, this is one condition. Another condition is what? A greater than C. Both the conditions should be true. Then only we can say A is the largest number. A greater than B should be true. A greater than C also should be true. If both are true, then only A is the largest number. A greater than B returns a true. That means a Boolean value. A greater than C also should returns true. That is also Boolean value. And uh, 
if both are true, then only we can say A is the largest number, right? So in that particular context, which operator we have to use between these two Boolean values? Both should be true, then only the final value should be true. So which operator we have to use between these two expressions? End operator. End is what? Logical operator. Okay. So here A greater than B and A greater than C. So this time we specified two expressions. Remember, this is one condition. This is another condition. Both should be written true. Then only the final condition becomes true. Okay. Inside this, we have written two expressions. A greater than B and A greater than C. Both should return true. Then only the if condition becomes true. Okay, even if one is false, then if condition will become false. So in both expressions, both the expressions, it should both return true only. So if the if condition is true, then the, what does it mean here? We can simply say A is the largest number. A is the largest number. So first validation is done. So this is done. Now, suppose if this condition is false, what does it mean? If this condition is false, what does it mean? A is a not largest number, right? If A is a largest number, obviously this if condition becomes true. If this if condition is not becomes true, what does it mean indirectly? A is a not largest number. So we need to compare next number. What is the next one? B, B greater than A and B greater than C. Then B is the largest number. So how can we put another condition? Else, if one more condition. So here we can say A greater than B, sorry, B greater than A and B greater than C. So now we are comparing B with A and C. So if both are true, then this if condition becomes true. So here we can say system dot out of talent B is a largest number. B is a largest number. So now the second condition is also over. Now, suppose even this condition is also written false. So first condition checks A is the largest or not. Second condition check B is largest or not. If both the conditions are false, what does that mean? Obviously, C is the largest number. Is there any other case here? Nothing, right? If both conditions are false, then obviously C is the largest number. So do you really want to put this condition? Not needed, right? So directly you can write in else block. Condition is not needed. You can simply write system dot dot print ln C is largest number. So for comparison of C, there is no condition, not required. Why? Because here we decided A is not largest number if it is false. If the second condition is false, B is not largest. Obviously, what is the other number we have is only C. So we can say in else block, we can simply say C is the largest number. So this will execute only if about two conditions are written false. So about two conditions written false means what? A is and B are not largest numbers. Obviously, the C is a largest number. So this is how we can implement the logic. And here, if I notice, we are using logical operators along with relational operator, the combinations. Because logical operators also will return true or false. The if condition required a Boolean value. That expression, whatever we have written is, should return a Boolean value. In the last class, I think somebody asked where exactly we used the Boolean variables and Boolean values. So here, all the conditional statements, looping statements works based upon the Boolean values. Okay. So if this condition returns true, true means what? A Boolean value. If the condition returns false, false means what? It's also a Boolean value. Okay, based on the value, the statements will be executed. Now let us test this. So first I'll say 10, 20, 30. So what we are expecting now, C is the largest number. So when I execute, so you can say C is a largest number. Now let's make uh, A is... 100. Now when execute, you will say A is the largest number. Now let's make B is 200. Then it says B is a 
largest number. Okay, so all conditions are satisfied. Suppose instead of A, B, and C, I just want to print a number also. Along with this A, B, C, I want to just print number also so that I can clearly know which number is largest number. So how can we customize the statement? So A is the largest number. Whatever you have put in the double quotations, it is as it is printing in the console window, right? Now, if you want to print the number also, the same number I just want to print here. Simply what you can do, concatenation plus A, concatenation. Simple. Here also I want to print the value plus B, concatenation. So here also you can simply say plus C, concatenation. Right. So when I execute it, along with this, it will also give the number. Right. So guys understood how to specify multiple conditions, multiple if conditions, along with multiple uh, expressions so if condition can have one expression or if condition can also have multiple expressions if condition can have one expression or multiple expressions okay so like this we can practice more number of uh, examples by using uh, if else conditions okay now let me show you one more example. Now, this time you guys can tell the output. Uh, I'm just writing a simple program. I can say multiple statements. So as I said before, in if else condition, we can also specify multiple statements, right? Single statement or multiple statements. Let me show you one more example. So here, uh, if uh, true, and here I'm printing one. Else, here I'm printing two. First of all, tell me this code is correct or not. This code is correct or not. Valid code or not. Say yes or no, everyone. It is valid or not. If true, system dot 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 print ln one. Else two. Can we put a Boolean value directly in if condition without having any expression? So I have not put any expression. So just I'm specifying a Boolean value. Can we put like this? Why not? We can easily put, right? Ultimately, we need a Boolean value here, right? Even if you say A greater than B or whatever, what we're expecting from this, a Boolean value, right? This will return a true or false. So instead of writing an expression, I can directly write a Boolean value like this. What's wrong in that? Right? So if condition is always accepting a Boolean value and that Boolean value can be a direct value or it can written by some expression. Okay. So when I say if true, then what is an output of this statement? So this is true, then if a block will execute, right? So when I execute this, see here, you got one. Can we pass false here? False. So if a false, then what will execute now? If it is a false, else block will execute. So when I run this, this will return true. You got my point? So what is my intention here is, I just wanted to tell you, instead of writing an expression, we can also write a, a Boolean value because ultimately the expression will return true or false. A Boolean value will be written by the expression, right? In all previous examples, in if condition, whatever expression we have written, all those expressions will return true or false. A Boolean value will be returned. Okay, so if it is a true, then if a block will execute. If it is a false, else block will execute. I hope this is clear to everyone. Got my point? Here we are not comparing anything actually. Here we are not comparing anything. Just we are written some Boolean uh, value because the ultimate goal of expression is when I compare something, it will return true or false. Right? Instead of comparison, I'm directly saying some Boolean value here. It is valid because if condition always 
accepting either true or false, Boolean value. It can be directly or through expression, whatever it is. Right? You understood my context here. In the if condition, you can pass an expression or you can pass a Boolean value directly. That's what I'm saying. Okay. For example, let's say here, I'm saying one equal to one. Can we put like this? One equal to one. Yes, because this will also return true or false. One equal to one, true or false? True. If it is a true, which one will execute? If a block will execute. So it will print to one. Okay, when I say one equal to two, the expression will return false. So else block will execute. Else block will execute. So what I'm saying here is, you can put either expression or you can directly put Boolean value. But ultimately, the if condition required a Boolean value. Okay, the if condition is always required a Boolean value. If it is a true, if a block will execute. If it is a false, else block will execute. Okay, that true or false, you can directly specify with the Boolean value or that comes through expression. Okay, now let me show you some more examples. Now this time you guys can tell the output of this program. Okay, so this is the one. I'm commenting this at the time of practicing, you can just uncomment and you can try. Okay, this is second example. Now, you guys can tell me the output of this program. So I can say if true, okay. And inside this, I will put one more if condition. Okay, so let me read the question first. When in if part, you passed a Boolean value as a true, okay? Then why it is passed first block and return values one? Because if it is a true, if it is a true, obviously if a block will execute, right? So if the condition is true, if a block will execute in the if a block, what we have written here? One only we have written. That is the reason it is printing one. Okay, if a condition is true, obviously the if a block will execute, that will return one. If the condition is false, then else block will execute, then it will return two because we put one and two in the print statements. Okay, yes, now we can just see here. If true, again inside the if condition, I'll put one more if condition. This is called nested if else condition. So the third one, nested if else condition. The third approach, nested if. Nested if else means what? One if condition can have another if condition. Multiple nested if else condition you can specify. So nested if else I'm showing here. So if it is a true and enter into the block. Here, I will again say true. And then here I'm printing some value. So I can say ABC. ABC else. System dot out dot print and x y j. Okay, now after coming out of this if condition else, here I will say one two three. This is my code. Now tell me what is an output of this? Output a b c or x y z or one two three? Which one? What is an output of this code? So this piece of code. Okay, so let us try to understand this. So first we'll start from here. The condition is true here. If it is a true, it will enter into the block. So what is the block of this if statement from here to here? This is all that comes under if block, first outer if block, okay? And this is a comes under first if block. Now, if it is a true, these statements should execute. Again, if you come inside, there is another if condition. So if it is a true, then ABC will execute else part will ignore okay so if it is true then abc got executed so the output of this code is what abc so when i execute it will return abc because the outer if condition is true it come inside and then it is this is also true then this statement is got executed so rest of them will ignore okay suppose when i say false here 
Now tell me what is an output of this false. So outer if condition is true. So it is entered into this block, but inner if condition is false. If it is a false, the else part, immediate else block will execute. That is X, Y, Z. So this is the output of this program. X, Y, Z. Okay. Now let us make this if condition false. Now tell me the output of this. So if condition is false means these statements will not be executed. So this if block will ignore. Obviously comes to else block. Inside this we put 1, 2, 3. So it will execute obviously 1, 2, 3. Okay. So this is how we can also write multiple if conditions and nested if else conditions. So one if condition can have a multiple if conditions. One if condition can have a multiple if else conditions. So it depends upon our requirement. We can use these statements, control statements. Okay. So we have seen only if a statement, if else a statement, nested if. Nested if in the sense, one if condition can have another if condition. Multiple times you can specify. Now let me show you one more example for uh, multiple if conditions. So example five. So in this, now I want to just print weak names, display weak names based on weak number. Okay, That means I will provide some number. When I say one, the program should display Sunday. When I provide two, the program should display Monday. So when I provide a number between one to seven, the corresponding week name should be displayed as an output. Okay. So how many weeks we have totally? Seven weeks, Sunday to Saturday, right? So all these seven weeks we have to print based upon the week number. So what is the input here? Week number is an input. Okay. So we need to check multiple conditions. If the week number is one, then print Monday. If the week number is two, then print Tuesday. If the week number is three, then print another thing. So like this, you can write multiple conditions. Okay, so let's try to do this. Close. And new class. Print week names. Take this main method. Say finish. So based upon the week number, I want to just print name of the week. So what is an input here? What is the variable you have to take? A week number. So I'll take integer variable int week number. Let us start with one first. Now we need to check this week number. We need to compare with uh, multiple week numbers like one, two, three, four, five, up to seven. So what is the first one? If this week number equal to one, if the week number equal to one, what we should say? This is Sunday. This is Sunday. Else. One more condition. Else. If week number equal to 2, then we can say Monday. One more condition. Else. If the week number week number equal to 3, then we can say Tuesday. So multiple conditions you can keep like this. If else, if else, if else like this. So all the conditions we can verify like this. Because the total seven weeks are there. So four, five, six and finally what? Seven. Obviously the last one uh, is seven. So that I can keep else if also. Else if week number equal to seven then I can print Saturday. Okay. Suppose if I provide invalid number other than 1 to 7. So week number should be between 1 to 7. So if the week number is other than 1 to 7, then what we should say? Invalid week number. We should display invalid week number. So now what we need to do? If we specify more number of conditions, if none of them are not satisfied, finally 
else block. In this, we can say invalid weak number because this else block will execute after completion of all the conditions. If no condition is not matching, finally else block will execute. So this is invalid weak number. You can print like this. So multiple conditions also we can verify by using if else conditions like this. Okay, now let us test this code. So initialize a week number one. So execute say Sunday. So that means the first condition itself is matched. So thus this statement is got executed. And as soon as this condition is matched, so rest of the conditions will not be verified. Okay, now let us make this seven. Sorry, here yeah, seven, week number seven. So it will verify all the conditions one by one. And finally, one condition is got matched here, week number seven. So it is got printed Saturday, fine. Now let's say 10 here, 10. So when I say 10, no condition is matching. So finally, else block will execute. So it will say, number is invalid weak number okay so this is how we can implement logic so we can also write multiple conditions multiple if else conditions depends upon your requirement you can frame the logic okay so these are all conditional statements we have seen if condition if else condition Nested if else condition means if conditions can also have another if conditions. And finally, switch case statement. So when we have to use switch case, this is also comes under conditional statement, but uh, we need to understand when we have to use switch case statement. Switch case statement, uh, we will prefer to use if we have a more number of conditions. For example, let's look at this example here. We have almost seven conditions. So how many lines of code we have written here? Almost 40 plus. Almost 40 plus lines of code we have written to verify the seven conditions. So if you have a more conditions like this, seven conditions, sometimes you have a 10 condition, 20 conditions. If you have a more conditions like this, instead of using if else conditions, better to go with a switch case statement. Why? Because switch case statement will reduce the lot of code. In switch case statement, it will also perform the same thing. The objective of same, whatever the if-else condition is doing here, same thing we can achieve by using switch case statement. But what is a major advantage of it is, it will reduce the code. It will reduce the code. So why we need to reduce the code? Because if you are saying a developer is writing very good code, on what basis you will say, if, if the developer is more efficient, he will write a small thing and do bigger task. Inefficient developers, they will write a big code, but do the small task. So unnecessarily, we should not increase the size of the code. We always try to reduce the code. With minimal code, we should achieve the larger things. So then only he's an efficient developer. So instead of writing more number of if-else conditions like this, more, much, much code, we can try to reduce this code by writing the switch case statement, right? So now let me show you how can we write switch case statement and how to use switch case statement. Same program, I will try to write a switch case using switch case and then we will see how much of lines it will read. Almost 50% of the code will be reduced. Okay, now we'll see the first syntax. Syntax. Switch case. So the syntax will be like this. First, we need to start with the switch. And here, we don't specify the condition case. Okay, we specify the variable. Okay, and inside this switch, we will write one thing called case keyword. Case, case is a keyword. Here we specify the value of the variable. Okay, so if the variable value is equal to this one, let's say value one. Okay, and then here we specify the statements. <clears throat> okay, 
And suppose if the variable value is not equal to this one, then another case, case value equal to two, then execute another set of statements. And suppose even this variable is not equal to this value two, then another case, case value three, and then execute statements. And if the variable value is not equal to any of these value, not matching with any of these values, then finally we specify default. It is just like a else block. So if none of the cases are not matching, finally default block statements will execute. This is a switch case, switch and case syntax. So now let me show you how can we use this uh, with this switch case commands. So can we write a program without declaring the variable using conditional statement? Yes, you can write. If you have such requirement, you can write. You can directly put the expression because why variables are needed, you need to first understand that concept. Why we need to create a variable? What is the importance of variable? To store the data, right? To store the data or to maintain the data, we have to create a variables. If you do not have variables, what you want to achieve with the program? If you do not have any variables to define in your program, what do you want to achieve? First of all, you need to clear about your goal, right? Why you are writing the program? What you want to achieve with this program? If you are clear about the goal objective, then you will know exactly variables are required or not. Okay, variables are required or not. So just think logically, guys. Why we variables are required to store the data? And you have some data. Now you want to have some comparison. Then what you will do? Definitely you will go with the control statements. And if you don't want to compare anything, then don't go with the conditional statements. If you have such requirement. For example, I just created two variables. I just want to print the values of them. Do you need control statements? If else conditions, you, you need them. You don't need just you create a variables and you're printing the data. Just by using print statement, you can print the values of A, B, C. You're not comparing anything. So no, no need any control statements or if else conditions. But if you want to compare something, if you want to do some operation based upon certain conditions, definitely you have to write a if else conditions. You guys understood? So variables definitely we needed for almost in every program. Without variable, we don't write any program first of all. It doesn't make any sense. Without variable, you don't want to achieve anything, right? If you want to achieve something, we have to write some program, some logic, some implementation should be there. If you just want to print a name, I don't need any control statement. What is the main achievement for this, right? If you just simply write a system.order.println, your name, what is the main objective of the program? If your objective is just printing the data, you don't need conditional statements. But if you want to perform certain operations based upon certain conditions, comparison, all these things, you need to use conditional statements. So you can write program, you can use conditional statement with variables and without variables also. But if I don't want to use variables, there is no objective of that program. See, in the previous example, in multiple statements here, uh, have you written any variables here? Did I create any variables here in this program? Have you written any variables? No, right? I haven't used any variables. Still, I have used conditional statements. Why? Because I directly put the values. Instead of writing variables and uh, storing the data, I directly put the values here. So I have not used variables. It depends on your requirement. It keeps changing. Okay, so the input also we can pass through the console window at the runtime. So that I will show in the com coming sessions because we want to know the scanner class. So through the scanner class, we can take this input at the runtime. So once your program is got executed, at the runtime, you can provide the number. Randomly, you can pass input. That is possible. Okay, that I will cover in the coming sessions. For now, just follow this approach, okay? So... Now, let us see how can we write the same program using switch case statement. So, if you want to achieve this, we have written almost 40 lines of code, 40 plus lines of code when I use if else conditions, right? But if you write the same program by using switch case statement, 
uh, we'll see how many lines of code is got reduced. Fine. So let me create another class. Switch case most important. Listen carefully. Many times we prefer to use this. Switch case statement. Okay, just observe. So I already told you syntax. So if the switch variable, here we should not specify any condition, okay? We just specify only variables. And here we are comparing it. So first we'll take a variable, int weak number. Let's take one. Now we need to write a switch case statement. How to start switch. And here we specify the variable. What is the variable here? Weak number is a variable. And inside this switch, we have to write a multiple cases. So what is the first case here is? Case, if the weak number equal to one, here value is what? One. If the weak number is one, colon, here we have to put colon, not curly braces, okay, colon. Here you can write what are the statement you want to execute. So here I want to execute system dot out dot and then you can say something. And after completion of the statement, immediately you have to write one more thing called break. Break is basically called jumping statement, but here we have to use break command after executing the statement. But I'll tell you why we have to use this break statement. Just hold on. So this is one case. Suppose if the weak number is not matching with one, then another case, case two. Here, system dot order println, say Monday. Again, after the statement break. Break. Okay, like this, I can write multiple conditions. I can write multiple conditions. Okay, so you can put this break statement in the next line or in the same line, no problem, because the semicolon is representing the end of the line. This statement is got ended. So after that, you can put this statement in the next line or you can keep in the same line, no problem like this. Okay, now we can put multiple conditions, case one, two, three, four, up to seven conditions we have to specify. So here we can write seven conditions like this. And after completion of all seven cases, finally, if suppose none of the cases are not matching, then finally default. Here we have to say system in invalid weak number. Here break is not required. Here break is not required. Okay, so this is our program. See how much size it is got reduced. Almost 50% of the code is got reduced. If I use which case statement. Okay, now let us first test this code and after that we'll see how it is got executed. So week number one means what? Week number one and case one is matching. So obviously it will print Sunday. Okay, Sunday is got printed. Now let's make it as a seven. So seventh me seventh case matched and Saturday is got printed. Now let us make ten. Okay, so ten. So let's try to execute copy Java application. Now invalid week. So default is got executed. If none of the cases are not matching, finally default is got executed. Fine, it's perfectly working fine. Now let us try to understand how this code is got executing and why we need this break additional statement in every case. So it's normally switch case statements uh, will work based upon the case, not condition actually. So this weak number equal to one, then this statement will execute. If you not specified the break here, for example, if you're not specified the break, then what will happen? Okay, let me remove the break here. Okay, and we'll see what will happen. We'll say, make it as a one. So first case is matching. The statement will execute, right? So when I execute this, just observe what happens. 
it is displayed two week numbers sunday is fine because the case one is got match sunday is got printed now immediately what is printing monday also it is printing so how it is happened because as soon as the statement is got printed immediately it will execute the next statement without checking any case without checking this case by default the second statement will be executed okay so if you put this break then what will happen after the statement is got executed, we no need to execute the rest of the statements. It doesn't make any sense, right? At a time, only one statement we want to execute. So when you specify break, automatically this break command will jump out from this switch command. This come out from entire block. Wherever the break is got executed, that will break the condition. It will break the block. It will come out from this block automatically. Same thing. Suppose if the case 1 is not matching, then it will go to case 2. And case 2, Monday is got displayed. Immediately, break. It will come out from the block. If I don't specify break here, then what happens? If break is not created here, then what happens? So, it is got printed Sunday. So, let me just put 2 here. Then, So it is got printed Monday and also it is printed Tuesday because we haven't put we haven't put break here. So now you understand what is the importance of break here. If I don't put break command, it will automatically execute the next command, the next statement without checking any case. So that is the reason as soon as your case is got executed immediately, we have to use break command. This is mandatorily required for every case. But why we haven't specified break for default? Here we just specify only statement. There is no break. Can anyone guess why we haven't specified break for default? Why? Yes, because after execution of the statement, there is no other statement to be executed, right? This is the last statement. Obviously, it will automatically break. After execution of this default statement, it will anyway come out from the block. So break is not at all needed here. But rest of the cases, break is mandatorily required. So if I compare this with our previous example, same program, same objective, we have achieved in two different ways by writing multiple if conditions, by writing a switch case statement. And if you look at the size of the code, by using if else conditions, almost we have written 40 plus lines. And by using switch case statement, we have just written 20 plus lines. So almost 50% of the code is got reduced. So this is the main advantage of using switch case statement. So whenever you have a more number of conditions to verify or compare, try to use switch case statement instead of using if else condition statement. So nothing wrong in this. You can use if else or switch case. Both are correct. But which one will be used more efficiently? When you compare, switch case statement will be preferred. Okay, this is also another type of switch case statement. So these are all four different type of conditional statements which we have discussed if if else nested if else switch case these are all called conditional statement first category of control statements so what is the use of conditional statements if you want to execute set of statement or statements based upon certain condition we can go with conditional statements conditional statements based upon the condition we can choose the particular block we want to execute or not that we can decide based on the condition then we can go with conditional statements. And we also have something called looping statements. So looping means the same set of statements we will repeat multiple times. Repetition will be there. And we have a while loop, for loop, do while loop, multiple type of looping statements are there. So in the next session, we will discuss about looping statements and then jumping statements. Okay. And I got one question here. Is there a shortcut on the keyboard? What is the shortcut? For copy, duplicate, uh, shortcut to copy or duplicate the code like you do. You can just copy paste, control C and control V. So actually some of the statements I already written somewhere. So I'm just copying from there. 
Okay, so you have to write it or you can just copy paste control C and call control V. That's it. Nothing new. Okay, so based on these topics, I will give you some assignments today. So you guys can try those assignments. It based on total today's topic, conditional statements. Assignments. Okay, so the first assignment. So we have seen how to find largest of three numbers, right? So by using multiple if else conditions. So you guys can try largest of two numbers, very small. The largest of three numbers, we written multiple conditions, but here the conditions will be reduced. Largest of two numbers. And you can achieve this by using two different ways. Using if else conditions, you can try also by using ternary operator. This is very famous in the equation. Ternary operator. Do you guys remember what is ternary operator? Yesterday we have discussed it. Ternary operator. So by using ternary operator also, we can achieve this solution. Simple one single line, we can achieve this. You can also write if else conditions, but instead of writing if else conditions, you can simply write one single statement, ternary operator, to find largest of two numbers. Try this, okay? Yesterday we have already discussed about ternary operator. Now the second example. We have seen how to find largest of three numbers. So you guys can try smallest of three numbers. Okay, smallest of three numbers. Again, you have to use if else conditions, multiple conditions, if else. Okay, now the third example. You have to print weak name. Okay, so you have to print weak number based on weak name, exactly opposite. We have here we have seen we have taken weak number as an input and printed weak names, right? Now, what you have to do, you have to take weak name as an input and then print a weak name number here. Exactly, you have to do reverse. Okay, so you have to take a weak name here as an input, and here you have to specify the weak number. So how to replace this? So simple, just I'm giving some clue, you guys can try. So here we say int weak number equal to two, three, four, five, right? But here we have to take a string variable. String weak name equal to, you can specify Sunday, Monday, or whatever you want. This is the input. String, we have to take input. But how can we compare this in the switch case? And if you want to write a switch case, you can write like this, switch, and here, Weak name, whatever the variable we define. And how to write a cases here? Case 1, 2, 3, 4. No. Because this 1, 2, 3, 4 is a values actually. Weak numbers. So here, the weak names you have to write. Okay, case. Because it is a string, we have to keep inside the double quotation. Case is Sunday, like this. Okay, case is Sunday. Then system dot out dot print ln 1. And then breaker like this you have to write you understood now so completely opposite so here we taken the weak name and comparing with the weak name in every case we have to write a weak name sunday monday tuesday thursday like this seven weak names and you have to print weak number exactly opposite of this right so just you try this because we are Keeping the strings, right? Because if it is a string, we have to keep inside the double quotations. If it is a number, we can directly put the number. Try this. So this is one assignment. It is. Okay, so. So print weak number based on weak name. So here use switch case. Okay. So you guys can try these uh, three examples uh, today. 
in tomorrow once you discussed looping statement then i will give you some more assignments right so we'll stop here for today's session and tomorrow we'll continue